Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Bishop Rice I'm coming to you from the Catholic Center here in Springfield. And today we're going to have the first of two sessions regarding the Sacrament of Confirmation, particularly to explain the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've often found in my confirmation experiences that um, there's seven of them, and it's hard to truly explain the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in a homily without making the homily very long. So that's why we hope that all of our catechists are preparing our young people with the knowledge of these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit beforehand. Oftentimes the first reading uh, at a confirmation mass comes from the book of Isaiah. And I'd like to begin by reading them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. From the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah. But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse and from his roots a blood, a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Let us ask our ladies intercession as we discuss the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I mentioned, uh, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in the book of Isaiah, we believe in the church that those seven gifts are bestowed upon an individual in the sacrament of baptism. That's why we use the sacred chrism to anoint the child, and we have the laying on of hands in the sacrament of baptism. And then that is sort of um, completed, or let's use the word confirmed, in the sacrament of confirmation as well. So from the very beginnings of our spiritual life in the sacrament of baptism, we have in potency the potential that is hopefully uh, acted upon as we grow older in the knowledge of the faith to live by the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I want to talk about the seven gifts. And again, uh, for this first session, we're going to go through the first three. So we're talking about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit from Isaiah. And then in the church, to the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. So it's very important uh, that we have an understanding of those. Because what happens with the gifts of the Holy Spirit is we use terms that are very common and I think people therefore think that, oh, the common use of the word is what it means. And that's not true. For example, wisdom. We might all know people who are wise, intelligent, smart. That's not what wisdom is about when we talk about it as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In fact, it has a rather profound and kind of uh, in your face definition. What is wisdom? Wisdom is to despise, that's a strong word, huh? To despise the perishable things of this world. To despise what is perishable. What does that mean? If somebody comes up to you and says, I despise you, they don't like you, okay? They're not your friend. They don't want nothing to do with you. In fact, it's not a good thing. If somebody despises you, they don't want to be in your presence. Let's look at that word and compare it to the next word, to despise the perishable things. What are the perishable things in this world? The things that don't last, okay? The things that we have today that we thought we needed, and then a week later, it's over in the corner. We don't even look at it to despise the perishable things of this world. I always tell a story about this gift of wisdom. So I'm one of seven boys in my family. I'll never forget one year in Christmas when I was a young kid, my mom decided to get seven jackets, all matched jackets for us boys. It was one of those, one of those uh, they're quilted on the inside and they're, um, they're um, on the outside, what, what, are they, what are they called? Flannel on the outside, okay? So flannel on the outside, kind of quilted on the inside. All seven of us boys got the same matching jackets, okay? Here it is, we got it Christmas morning. Christmas night after Christmas dinner, 
my brother and I were taking out the trash into the back alley, into the trash cans, and we made a race of it. And so the two of us said, who can get back to the house first? So we're running to the alley, and I'll never forget this. I put my arm over the fence, and I lifted up the lid of the garbage can. I put the trash in the garbage can, put it back down, and when I pulled my arm back, my coat snagged on a nail and ripped. Christmas night. I didn't even have that coat for 24 hours and it was already ripped. And I'll never forget at that moment, I thought, wow, the things of this world don't last. That's the perishable things of this world. You think of what was the latest craze this past Christmas, that the have to have toy for the kids or the most popular gadget for adults with uh, whatever it might be with computers. I have no idea. But oftentimes we get these things that we think we need, and then a month later, we're not even looking at them. Huh? To have the proper attitude toward the things of this world. So to use the word despise, that's a strong word, but it kind of bespeaks the attitude that we should have about the things of this world. To despise the things that don't last. And then the second part of the definition is to aspire to what is eternal. To aspire, to shoot for, to try to get it, huh? To grasp it, to make it part of your own. To aspire to what is eternal. Because this is our ultimate destiny. That's the gift of wisdom. And oftentimes I found in some of our textbooks, unfortunately, the gift of wisdom is watered down to this generic, well, to be aware of God or something like that. No, that's not it at all. It's very challenging to despise the perishable things of this world and then to shoot for those things that are going to get me to eternity. What are the things that last? Faith. Hope. Love. These are the things that are eternal, and that's what I should be shooting for, huh? The things that are eternal in the midst of this perishable world. Now, I'm a realist. We need the things of this world. I had breakfast this morning. We need the things of this world. I have clothes on. We need the things of this world. I have a car out in the parking lot. We need the things of this world, but we have to have the proper attitude. Wisdom gives me the proper attitude toward the things of this world with the ultimate goal of heaven, eternity. That's the gift of wisdom. From wisdom, let's go to the second gift. The second gift I want to talk about now is the gift of understanding. And again, it's one of these words that we use in our everyday English language. But how we use it in our everyday use and what we mean as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are two different things. We found that with the wisdom. We think we know people who are wise. That's not what we're talking about. Wisdom is to aspire to eternity. Same thing with understanding. In the gift of understanding, we ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten my mind. Why? Why? with divine truth. Okay, with divine truth. Not that I can take a book, this is the Bible here, but say this was a math book. I open up and chapter three is about division. I guess they still teach how to divide in math class. And I can understand if I follow the program, I can understand how to learn how to divide and multiply. That's not what we're talking about, huh? The ultimate goal of understanding is divine truth. Okay? In other words, God has a plan for me. I think this is one of the 
fundamental conflicts in our culture today. People are wondering, what's the meaning of life? Why am I here? Why do these things happen to me? And then the church comes back and says, with the gift of understanding, we say that that's part of enlighten my mind to God's divine truth, that God has a plan for each one of us. And some people, they just don't believe it. They just think we're here by happenstance. I'm a collection of molecules that just happens to be intelligent, that I can speak and understand a rational creature. No, it's more than that. God has a plan for my life, okay? I, and the reality is, I don't always understand the details of it, okay? In fact, sometimes the details of life are not pleasant. Maybe sometimes they are, or sometimes they're not pleasant. But I pray in the gift of understanding to see that this is all part of God's plan. Again, another example from my life. My dad passed away when I was a junior in high school. I was in high school. My brother was a senior. I was a junior. My other brother was a, a freshman. The twins were in eighth grade. And my younger sister was in seventh or sixth grade, whatever she was. <clears throat> there were six of us still at home. My mom was a widow at the age of 49. I'm sure she didn't plan on that on the day she got married. My dad passed away in March of 1977. In May of 77, it would have been 25 years. They didn't make it to 25 years. Now, what can I do about that? I can moan and groan. I can blame God and say how mean that was. Or God, why are you picking on my family? Why are you doing this to my mom? Why are you doing this to our family when we needed our dad at such a, such a crucial age? And that's all legitimate. But at the end of the day, understanding says, Put my, the details of my life into God's divine plan. I don't know why it had to be, but I do believe that God knows how to make right with awful situations. That I do believe. And so understanding says, what are the details of my life? Sometimes life is good and happy. That's great. Sometimes it's very difficult and it's a struggle but to understand that God has a plan for me. It's a personal plan for me. It might involve his cross and that's fine. And the thing is with understanding is I don't have to know why. I just have to know that God's in charge. And that's tough. And a lot of people walk away from the church for that very reason. I've spoken before about what they call the big lie. The big lie says, Say all the prayers that they tell you to pray. Uh, observe all the rules and regulations that they tell you to follow. And nothing bad will happen in life. That's a big lie. And our Lord never said that. In fact, in the scriptures, our Lord said, if you want to be my disciple, pick up your cross and follow in my footsteps. That's what our Lord said. And to recognize that the details of my life, be they blessings or difficulties, is part of God's plan for my life. I don't have to know how it's all going to work out, but I step forward in life with confidence, okay? Understanding will give me confidence to face the difficulties of life. That's the gift of understanding. And it implies that what do I understand? That God has a plan. I don't have to know all the details. The details don't need to be known to me. That's God's concern. That's part of God's plan and not for me to understand that part. So the understanding comes from, okay, what's going on in life right now? How is my personal life? What's going on in this world of ours? And then I give it over to God as part of his plan. And I ask God, give me the confidence to move forward in the midst of all that's going on. That's the gift of understanding. Now, let's take the third one for this session, and then we'll wrap it up. The third gift of the Holy Spirit I want to talk about is the gift of counsel. Counsel. You go to summer camp and you have a counselor, don't you? The counselor is supposed to make sure you don't drown when you're in the water. You don't hurt yourself in arts and crafts. You don't shoot yourself when you're practicing bow and arrow, whatever. The counselor is supposed to be watching over you. The gift of counsel as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a little bit different, okay? 
Counsel is a challenge for me to choose. I choose the surest way. I'm making a choice to please God. That's my goal, to please God and gain heaven. Please God and gain heaven. The ultimate goal of counsel, as for probably all the gifts you can say, the ultimate goal is heaven. But I have to make choices. This is kind of a, a, a wake-up call here, the gift of counsel. Because the gift of counsel reminds us that every choice that I make has a consequence. For good, hopefully, but sometimes for bad. Every choice has a ripple effect. If you're near a body of water, you take a little pebble and you throw that pebble in the water and what happens? There's the ripple effect. The same thing with our choices, okay? So the gift of counsel reminds me to ask the Holy Spirit to guide my choices so that I'm making choices so that are gonna please God and gain heaven. These are challenges for us today in our society. Okay, but to realize every choice I make has a consequence in time that we're living in and in eternity. That our good works continue on, you know, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, and love never ends. So that our good works, our choices of pleasing God and gaining heaven, they carry on in eternity. Now, the challenge is some people can say, well, Bishop, what happens when you have uh, two goods right in front of you? I could choose this thing, and that would be a good thing, and I can choose that thing, and it would be a good thing. My, my question always is when you have a choice between two goods, how do you decide? Here's a good method to ask. Say, what is going to challenge you to the greater love? What is the greater act of love in a particular situation? When I have two goods I can choose in front of me, what's going to be the greater challenge for me to love? I could choose A, and that'll be easy for me, and it's a good work. Or I could choose B. It might be more difficult, more challenging, but it's going to be a great act of love, a greater act of love. Okay? St. Francis de Sales says, when you have a choice between two goods in front of you that you could do, he says, you look at them, you weigh it out. And then you just go with one and you don't worry about it. So I put it this way. He says, you just go with it. I say, go with God. Whatever that looks like, go with God in a particular situation. Whatever is calling me to the greater love. The gift of counsel reminds me that every choice that I make has a consequence. Now, the vast majority of them, maybe they have... Uh, they're not moral consequences, okay? This morning, uh, if I chose between, what did I have for breakfast? If I chose between having yogurt or I chose to have um, uh, toast with, with jelly, that doesn't matter, does it really? Um, well, the the yogurt might have been more better for me, better for me instead of having the jelly, but it's two good things. They're simple. There's no moral consequence. That, that doesn't, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what's the surest way. Number one, we want to please God. We want to make God happy in this choice. And the ultimate goal of gaining heaven. And if you have two situations, what's going to be the way to have the greater love? What's calling me to the greater love? And then you just go with it. And you know that God's going to be pleased with my decision. Okay. So we've just gone over three of the seven uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gift of wisdom, to despise what is perishable. That's a strong word. But to aspire to what is eternal. Number two, the gift of understanding. To enlighten our mind with the light of divine truth and to recognize that my life is part of God's divine plan. The details of my life are part of God's plan. I don't need to know how it's going to play out, but I have confidence in moving forward. And the gift of understanding. And then the third one is the gift of counsel. 
to choose the surest way of pleasing God, gaining heaven? What's going to call me to the greater act of love, especially when I have two choices of good? Make that choice for the greater love and go with it and don't worry about it. Let us ask our Lady's blessings. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.